Yep. All right. So uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but um, all the German reinforcements for the entire month of November are going to be coming from this hex right here, 0118, every single one of them. So now you can see why I really wanted to um, take a good hard look at the um, at the German rail lines. And the magic marker thing it worked out wonderfully. I, uh, I'm not going to bring the other map over, but um, it just allowed me to enhance, like I was able to focus either just on the single track or just on the double tracks. And so what I've been doing right now is I've, like I've, I've identified all the positions where uh, things have to go. And then I'm like, okay, how many different ways can I get to the same spot? Um, you know, and then, uh, but using uh, different rail lines, um, and, you know, like a game in the game kind of thing. And it's been working great. And I just try to avoid using the double rail lines as much as possible. So uh, anyways, I've popped in all the... As you can see, all the German, uh, I mean, all, I've uh, combined all the uh, the German and the Austro-Hungarian reinforcements so I can see where they're coming from. And I also had to divide them up because of the uh, the Katowice Conference Agreement there. <clears throat> Remember that some of them ha are, and some of them are going to go to German command, uh, the Vorsch uh, army, which is uh, west of the Visloka River near the Tritown area, and then everybody else is going to go east with the uh, with Brejevich and the Austro-Hungarians. And then I also I forgot that um, the Austro-Hungarians are allowed to strip their garrison, uh, uh, their fortresses as well, their garrison troops. Uh, it's just the Russians aren't allowed to. So that means they've got uh, 28 combat strength points available to them. And just to be kind of, I guess, a bit of tongue-in-cheek or like a backhanded compliment or whatever you want to call it, I, I decided to call them Hotzendorf Divisions uh, because in my universe, he's kind of getting pushed out in a way. So he's been sent off. Like he he wasn't even one of the signatories, I don't think. I'll have to take a look for the Katowice Conference Agreement. I'll check, but I don't think so. Uh, maybe he was, but um, anyways, and they're going to be uh, two, three divisions, just like the gray ones. So that's, you know, I'm kind of in a weird, just like uh, Dave Schroeder was doing, organically incorporating, I guess, lower quality troops. And that's the way they are. They're going to be appearing that way. So what that means is they're going to congest the rail lines as, but they're going to be, they're going to still count as a division, not a brigade. Um, and so it's going to congest rail lines and, and so on and so forth. That's why I'm going to do it. And I, I love that bit. Uh, here's the weird thing. Well, for me, I, I don't believe in coincidences, but, um, this week is the week. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to be stripping, uh, all the troops from, uh, and here you got to remember too, I've been reading about, you know, about the fortress of Shemesh, well, actually a book called Fortress and uh, the Siege of Sem uh, Shemesh, and, um, you know, all those troops, as you guys probably know, we're not, like, con like the super veteran types. I mean, my God, these guys were, like, reservists beyond belief. We never expected to see the front-line action and all that stuff. Um, so, anyways, I mean, that's how they're going to be represented here. Uh, anyway, so, knowing that, and then um, it was kind of weird to know that this... So back in 1915, so this week, I'm not sure the exact date, I'll have to check it up, but I think it's March, March 22nd, and remember, they're two days behind us, uh, if you look at it, so like uh, for us, when we do on uh, the Saturday live stream, it's Thursday for them in 1915, so what would that be, 25th is going to be the Saturday, so that would be what... Uh, I'm not very good with this, so that would be a Wednesday. So I'm, on there is Monday, I do believe. Um, the troops in Shemesh, I think after 133 days, uh, surrender to the Russians. And that was after three failed attempts by uh, Hotzendorf to... Um, so here again, yet an, uh, another kind of weird backhanded thing. I don't know how the troops would feel about being uh, called Hotzendorf... Uh, uh, divisions, but uh, that's the way it is. And Amos, now he gets to focus in Serbia and and that, you know that type of stuff because things have been going as we know really darn well here. It's almost like uh, things have been accelerated, except for this bit. 
I'll show you the map later. I mean, you guys can look it up anyways for what was going on with the Great Retreat and the, and the Gorlitza uh, Tarnif uh, breakthrough. But I mean, there was, you know, no one in here. Uh, there was no Russian troops here, just a scant little tiddly bit up in the north bit here. Um, there was a whack load up in Warsaw, and um, and they also had uh, Kielce and Radom and whatnot. But uh, you know, and everybody was entrenched to the to the nines. It was unbelievable. However, knowing that, like I said, going uh, back with Hatzendorf uh, towards Serbia, now he gets to focus on that. Brevich gets to deal with all this stuff. He's the new shining. Uh, star, and then I was, remember I was mentioning this book a little while ago, and I have to start thinking because the end of November is approaching, and I have to start thinking about um, how the other powers, like what's going on. It, well, the same thing. That's one thing I love about um, th this game is uh, Dave Schroeder's tied it in with uh, you know the de demoralization. That's how you win the war. Uh, it's you know connecting it with the home front and the political pressure and all that stuff, which I just didn't didn't factor in very much when I played other games, such as, you know, when I'm like the battle of whatever, I'm not thinking of that type of stuff because this is such a long term, whatever. And, you know, and then I was reading up like it's not going to happen yet, but I think it's happening this year. I think even um, one of the British government, uh, the British government gets toppled because of something called the, the shell crisis crisis or something. There just wasn't enough ammunition being produced and so on and so forth. And I'm like, holy F, like there's a, so, and then also, you know, that the, the, the tug, pull uh, the tug of like military could say, well, yeah, we can get this done. It's going to take a hell of a long time. And then the politicians and everybody are also like, are you out of your flipping mind? Like earth calling, we don't have that many resources. Uh, have you ever heard of a naval block blockade? And that, you know, that type of stuff. It's just like, wow. Um, but anyways, this is the book where I was kind of like, oh, it's a children's book. I'm like, I'm such a dick. But uh, it's a summation, and I'm like, okay, maybe that, well, obviously, I'm just hoping that bookstore, the used bookstore, has um, the other ones. So anyways, what I'm starting to do is I'm going to look into this again. This is the one that t touched me off with the Chancellor there. Um, oh, darn it. Uh, Theobald von something or uh, Helweg or something. Um, anyways, this is the one that kind of got me thinking about, uh, like, I was like... I've seen him, his name pop up, but this one was like, okay, enough's enough. Um, so what I want to start doing is start looking, for example, what were the allies and everybody else thinking about uh, before the war and so on and so forth, as well as the political pressure. And I think at around November, December time, there was obviously a lot of people, it seems to me, were starting to clue in that, holy F, this is not going to be a quick war. Uh, and... Probably some panic was starting to set in, um, and maybe this is why we start seeing like the introduction of poison gas in a little while, and like these weird things that you probably normally not see, uh, because people are starting to go, look, we need to get this war over with quick. How do we do this? Um, anyways, so that's so I'm thinking, okay, what would they be? What would some of them be thinking if they started seeing potential writing on the wall? that the Russians are not going to be doing well. Uh, what does that mean going into the winter months, which is perfect timing because that's when they started doing all the crazy ass planning. It seems to me anyways, they hunkered down and started preparing for spring. Okay. That's it. I uh, hope you're having a good, Oh God, I can't wait to talk about this effing stuff on Saturday. Okay. See you later.